On this week's show, Peloton's year in review is here. Bugs with bike resistance and tread screens. Plus, updates to studio bookings and wait lists. The Peloton app opens up to third-party treadmills and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 157 of Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm Amanda Siegel, and this week I'm joined by not one, but two co-hosts, John Pruitt and Chris Lewis. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, Amanda. Hey, Amanda. How are you? Good, good. Nice to have you back, Chris, and nice to have you on here. There are some interesting tidbits we are going to share with the community this week. So mm. um, it's kind of nice to have um, Chris's input should he feel the need to add in there. So thank you for being there. Everybody have um, a good week. Chris, I know that you had some vacation time. Um, you had fun. Yeah, it was a great vacation. I've not been able to jump back on my bike since I've been back, but I'm looking forward to getting back to that. But it's good to get away and get to some warm weather for a while. So that's awesome. Bike, what's that? I don't I know, um, right? I, I, oh my god, I'm telling you, I feel so guilty that I don't get on that bike, but I'm loving the tread. I am just loving the tread, and and we won't even go to row. Just, just I mean, wait we just won't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. We, I, uh, I, I've been, I've been, I've been really frustrated with my rowing form, my feedback. And just yesterday I realized that I hadn't like calibrated the form assist. Ah, okay. So now I'm looking forward to redoing it and seeing, you know, if, if, if I get a better percentage. So, um, yeah, cause I did Alex Karwoski's, you know, his like two back to back Thursday morning rows and I was like 47%. Yeah, and it was always telling me that my um, my drive I think was really low. So hopefully now after doing that little calibration, Th that's, hopefully now that's going to make a huge better. difference. Like if you don't calibrate, yeah, it's I just hope. going to be totally random. So I'll be curious to hear now that you've done that. Yeah, um, so we'll see. My, my I'll, New I'll Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution is to get on that road. The bummer is just being in Maryland. I'm kind of all over the place. So, um, yeah, my goal is to definitely try and get um, get some rows in in the new year. Well, we have tons to talk about, so why don't yeah. we kick right in? As always, folks, before we get started with the news, we always like to just remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Channel. So if you want to get to see us, then head on over to YouTube, stop the podcast, go and have a look there. Uh, make sure you click the right hand side of the video and hit the notify button to make sure that you never miss an episode. Yes. And of course, you can always listen to us if you're on the go. The audio is always available on all podcast platforms. So just search Pello Buddy TV there. And um, if you like the show, if you have some good feedback for us, please leave us a review. We love to get those five-star reviews that we read on the show from time to time. So we do really appreciate those. And of course, folks, we're on Facebook, Instagram, X, just search for Pillow Buddy, like, follow us on those platforms for all of the latest news. And now let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. All right. So first up, it's a little bit of disappointing news uh, in many members' opinions, but Peloton has shared the annual the annual year in review email with members that just came out this past week, summarizing members' accomplishments in 2023. It's somewhat um, of a different change and a little surprising that they're not bringing back the uh, cool down video, which they've done for the last year or two, um, like they did last year. So as a refresher, that cool down is Peloton's year in review feature that was rebranded in 2020. So it included a nice little video because obviously we're in a social media world now where we want to share our accomplishments, our stats, you know, just like we do after a workout, how they make that very easy from the Peloton app. Um, but it would highlight 
your key statistics, your top fitness modalities, frequent workout time, you know, day, uh, total number of active days, longest streak, uh, your top instructor that you worked out with the most, your badges earned, and, and a lot of other little tidbits. Um, and over the past couple of years, Peloton had teased that the cool down is on the way before its actual launch. They give you a little heads up. However, this year, they didn't make any announcement on social media about it returning. Um, and on December 13th, members received a year in review email. And some members posted inquiries asking about the cool down video. Um, and Peloton did respond in, um, I think it was on the official Peloton member page on Facebook. Um, they said no cool down video will be available this year, but you can access your Peloton usage statistics from 2023 in the year in review recap email. So, um, yeah, no, no cool down video, which is, which is surprising and disappointing. Um, Peloton separately went on to confirm to us that the year in review email covers, it's not even the full year. It covers from January 1st of, of 2023 through October 31st of this year. So this means that it's not including workouts from November 1st through the end of 2023 in that little summary. So um, you don't have like the full recap. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people wondering like where there's why their stats didn't match up to what they thought, and that was part of the reason there is you know it only goes through the end of October. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not sure why. I mean, that should absolutely be a first, you know, the first week of the of the month of you know of January should be when we get when we receive those and kind of you know give us that whole year. It just makes sense um, to do that. So well, last I, I'm not year, quite sure. Last year, I looked at my my camera roll for my cool down video from last year, and it was like December fifteenth. It's been mid December yeah. the last so, several years, but last year it's gone through the end of November, um, so it had an extra month worth of data in the past couple of years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, for the intern that's listening to the show, maybe you can pass that on to Peloton and let them know that there are some unhappy members out there. We really would like to um, get the whole year in review and we would like our cool down video back. Yeah. I mean, I, I have seen the comments. People have really been disappointed. And um, the other thing that was interesting, John and Chris, is that a lot of people never received their email. So I'm not yeah. sure whether there was a glitch in the system, um, but there you know, thanks to I, I know Tony Sinkinson had reached out to them and so he because he hadn't received. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. We in the bottom of the article, if you haven't received it, Peloton confirmed that they've updated their chat bot and you can go to their chat bot and there's a dedicated button for year and review and you can click that to kind of trigger yourself back in the queue. Um, so if you haven't gotten it yet, go to our article on the site. At the bottom of the article, we directly link to the chat bot. So you can Beautiful. go in there and trigger that to kind of nudge the system. And I think it will take two to five business days, it said. But they have made a system to kind of help people. Because the only way you can get it this year is the email. It's not going to be in your profile. So it's just the email or nothing. Got it. Got it. Mm. Got it. And, and yeah. do, we, do we know the reason behind that? Why? No. No. Okay. All right. Yeah, we never we never really get an explanation on a lot of things. It's just you always got to speculate. Was yeah. it budget? Did they just not have the IT man? Uh, I think they were all focusing on the studio, on, on changing the studio booking. That they never had time to write. They never had time to um, IT were very busy. <laughs> so they yeah, never had yeah. time to do there's, it. There's another pain point. Yeah. Well, anyway, so in addition. Um, the year in review email, it, it's not featuring instructors who are no longer employed with Peloton, which is interesting. Even if their classes remained on the platform during that time, um, that it includes this time frame from January to uh, the end of October. Um, and then the review email, if you did, um, if you're looking for it, if you think you might have missed it, it might be in your inbox. The subject line says your name and it says, we saw you hustling this year. And then it starts out with an image from Peloton's 2023 holiday campaign, which is work out your way um, before it gives you a bunch of different little statistics. And then if you see both miles and kilometers, keep in mind that rowing workouts are recorded in meters. So that's probably why. And then the next portion of the email, it highlights badges that you earned, which also contains a link to view the achievement page of your member profile, um, which is the same as you can see at any point during the year by visiting that page. And then after that is this new, 
I thought this was kind of this kind of lame, but after that is this new trophy case feature which highlights the member's season to shine. So this appears to reveal which season of the year um, you were most active in. So, for example, a member most active in summer received a poolside powerhouse trophy, and then a member most active in winter received a snowy strength seeker trophy. <laughs> so it kind of felt like a participation mm. award kind mm. of um, trophy. I got a, what did I get? It was really I poolside was, powerhouse. Yeah, me too. I was, <laughs> I was definitely busier in the summer. Well, for me, last winter was a disaster. So um, definitely picked up by game in summer. But, um, and then, yeah. I mean, and then also a lot of people, including myself, it mentioned I, I joined the Century Club, which I don't know what Century, I mean, I've pretty much hit every Century Club years ago. Maybe it was rowing. It could have been rowing. Oh, maybe rowing. It definitely wasn't rowing. Because oh, yeah. I'm only at like, I'm only hovering around like 60 something rows. So I don't know. And then the final section of the email reveals which instructor you trained with, with the most. Throughout 2023, which a, a lot of folks, when I shared part of mine, uh, part of my summary in Instagram, a lot of folks chimed in and messaged me that that it wasn't correct, that they that they got an instructor that, that they know definitely they didn't work out with. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, interestingly enough, I heard from Susan Yang, who is one of the admins for Maddie's Magic Makers. Oh, yeah. And they even got the the tag wrong for his his group. There were at least four tribe. different groups that I've heard of where the hashtag wasn't the primary wasn't correct for that. The primary currently used one. Yeah. So she said that the the tag associated with if you got if you worked out with Maddie the most was the Unstoppables. <laughs> so oh, they were very they, they were upset. very offended. Throwback to I'm Peloton days. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would have been, I thought it would have been like Body Party or you know the previous tribe name, you know, when they rebranded to Magic Makers. But yeah, <laughs> she was not a, she was not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing, I, like this year was a little light on the actual stats that most people are looking for, and I know there's going to be like towards the end of the year. I mean, we're getting close, but within the last week or starting into January, there'll be some third party tools where you can get that. I know Pillow Track. Yes. Um, is going to do one towards the end of the year. And also the new tool, Domestique, they're working on one as well that you can kind of get that whole year. So stay tuned and we'll be sure to share about that, you know, once we actually hit the end of the year and those are available. So if you're looking for more stats and actual numbers, uh, those will be coming from third parties at the end of the year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just a bummer because, you know, everyone was sharing that little cool down video to their reels, to their stories, to their, their page. Yep. And it's like this year you just click something and it just gives you your, a trophy screen for you to screenshot. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it just doesn't yeah. do it. So Peloton, it's, I mean, it's in their best interest to get that social media attention, which they're not going to get with this. Yeah, so. for sure. For sure. It's a bummer. All right. Well, moving on, um, Peloton is rolling out a software update that enables um, Peloton app to pair with and display statistics from third-party treadmills using Bluetooth um, FTMS, Fitness Machine Service. Um, of course, I am thrilled with this update because being down in Florida, I don't have the treadmill and I hate the fact that I can't see my stats. So this is really cool. So the, this feature though is available for app plus and all access members. Um, when paired with the um, third party treadmill, the Peloton app will display real time metrics during workouts, including incline, speed, pace, and distance. Um, this applies to running, walking, or tread boot camp classes, but not for outdoor audio, which makes sense because you don't get that information on the Peloton tread anyway. Um, after the uh, workout, members will have access to a summary showing distance, elevation gain, calories burned, pace, speed, and incline. Um, the data from a third-party treadmill workout will close 
closely resemble um, that from a workout using a Peloton Tread or Tread Plus. Uh, the third-party treadmill must have Bluetooth FTMS support to pair with the Peloton app. Um, and not all treadmills with Bluetooth capac- um, capability have the specific protocol. So this functionality is exclusive to the App Plus tier, uh, Peloton's premium, you know, digital only subscription, uh, subs- uh, subscription offering that, as you know, Peloton kind of went into this past year. Um, all access members who automatically have the app, you know, the App Plus tier can also use this feature. Um, it is not available for App Free or App One members. Uh, members can sync and pair their Peloton app with a non-Peloton member um, treadmill using this um, and, you know, basically getting to connect, um, you know, a Bluetooth option. So if you're kind of on your treadmill, you'll connect the Bluetooth option um, and choosing the FTMS um, enabled treadmill from the list. The the new feature is akin to how members can pair cadence sensors with the app for third party um, bikes. Uh, it raises the possibility of future updates allowing App Plus and all access members to sync with third party power meters for bikes as well. So definitely something, you know, to look to look out for. Um, I will definitely report back if, um, you know, the tread down here allows me to do that because that definitely will make a big difference. I think there's only three or four brands right now that have the FTMS support. So okay. I know one mm-hmm. that I've heard a lot of people talking about is I believe the Horizon 7.0 treadmill. I've okay. seen some people who have had the feature and it's not sure whether the treadmill doesn't support all the stats or if it's just because it's slowly rolling out, but they're able to get the speed and incline showing up or sorry, the speed and something else, but the incline and elevation wasn't pairing. So some people have had success success pairing some stats, but not others. But, you know, it's still slowly rolling out. So we'll have to see as time goes on. But there's a lot of people who are going to go to their tread and be like, well, my headphones work on here. But it's not not just the headphones. It's a second module. Um, It's still part of Bluetooth, but it's a very specific thing. Very good so, point. Yeah, you'll just have to yeah, check we have to life sure. ci- Yeah, we have life cycle down here, so I'm going to have to take a look. I don't think that's one of the brands oh, off the top of my sucks. head, but you should definitely double check to see. Mm. All right. I'll report back, but yeah, that's what we have down here. I'm still trying to convince um, the board to get a Peloton tread down here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Good luck. Right, exactly, exactly. All right. Well, Peloton has recently acknowledged – Two issues with bike and tread devices that have come up, um, likely following a recent software update that they were caused by. Um, they've been observed by members over the past week or so. I've seen a lot of chatter still from members about their bike resistance being off, even after before and after updates. Um, but Peloton has now acknowledged the issue and explained that they're working on a fix. So it is in progress. So first, the issue with bike owners that have experienced an issue is with the resistance. So in essence, the resistance knob is extremely sensitive and even just a slight little adjustment can cause the resistance to jump or go down significantly. For example, if you're trying to adjust the resistance to 35 and you just give it a very slight turn that would normally bring it to 36 or 37, it might jump to 41 all of a Ah. sudden. So when you make that slight turn back down, it might drop back down to 32 so the, the variance is, goes both directions. Um, another slight adjustment will make it settle on 36, making the 35 resistance number essentially unattainable. So it's just it's very wonky in that way. So it's been reported um, on both the original bike and the Bike Plus owners. And a member of the official Peloton member page on Facebook posted about the issue. Peloton did issue a response in a comment to that post and said, our team is currently investigating why Select Bike Plus members are experiencing this issue. In the meantime, 
yada, yada, yada. Please feel free to share your information with our team at support at onepeloton.com and we'll provide an update shortly on a fix. Since then, they have posted an official outage on their status page, confirming this issue more publicly. And they said that they're working on the fix. They think they know what the issue is and they believe it will, the fix will be rolling out Monday. So beginning of the week here in the next day or two, that fix should be rolling out in theory. Yeah. Yeah. And then the tread. So for this one, the tread, basically, people are trying to put it to sleep or just have it automatically turn off like it does. Um, and it's not doing it. A couple seconds later, it'll turn on and the screen just stays on. Um, this was originally reported on the tread, but I've heard people on the bike as well since then. Um, Peloton did the same thing when people posted an OPP about it. They said, we're aware of this issue. We're trying to uh, do a fix for it. But for that one, I haven't seen an official outage about it. So I'm not sure of the timeline of that one. Yeah, they said try unplugging the USB C power cable. And this is just, this is not the Tread Plus. This is just on the Peloton Tread. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. But it's also, I've seen it on the bike since then as well. So it very well could be on the Plus as well. There's just less people with that to report it. That happened to me on the bike, and I just did like a full power down. People have tried like factory the, resetting to fix it and it hasn't fully fixed it. So this one seems to be a little mm-hmm. wider spread. But at this point with a fix coming, um, I don't know if I jump through the hoops of doing a factory reset until they've rolled out what they think is a fix to see if that does it. Gotcha. All right. Will anyone use Peloton Gym on the app? If so, it now includes rep and weight tracking so it doesn't function with a camera one has to manually enter the data but can now log into the system just tap the movement card and then select the weight field and enter the weight number the weight will automatically appear in units of pounds or kilograms depending on your preference settings in your profile Tapping um, done will save your log and will pre-fill subsequent rounds with your chosen weight. Of course, you will be able to update this as you go through your workout by tapping the um, weight field and entering a new weight. Um, Once completed the round, make sure you hit the check mark as this will save your progress and lock the, um, the weight fill. Um, once locked, you will not be able to edit or update the weight fields unless you revert the round back to incomplete. As far as the rep goes, they are pre-filled on the class plan. However, you can adjust the number to customize your workout. So that is definitely a great feature for those folks that do use the app in the gym and aren't Hmm. kind of using the guide, um, which is really cool. Yeah, they rolled out this with AI tracking for the guide first. So people with a guide, the camera has been doing this automatically for them. And they're kind of taking that UI and bringing it to the app just for Jim for now. But, you know, they're not using it where you can turn the camera around and have the phone camera do it. It's all manual. But still, it's a first step to kind of get that data in the system. Right. And push. um, You know, I definitely think they're looking to go more towards kind of that app usage, being able to use your app anywhere um, is definitely, you know, where I can see them going. So yeah, I believe that was the interesting. App, I believe the gym workouts are available even on the free version of the app. I know they're available on the lowest tier price. So, okay. you know, this will be available to all, if most, if not all Peloton members out there. Got it. Got it. Where's the Peloton gym section? I it's mean, under classes, and I think there's a okay. tab for. Um, is it like? Is it like in the tabs for rowing, ride, uh, cycling? No. So there's when you click the column? classes at the bottom, it defaults to. There's a second tab bar at the top, and then oh, you okay. can change to gym collections or programs. So you just have to change the tab at the top to gym. Yeah, it's at that Got top. It. It's at that top there. So it says cla- yeah, classes, gym, collections, programs. So you just click the gym and then it goes, you know, all you can go all full body, upper body, lower body, etc. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. This this is definitely going to be uh, I've already seen a lot of feedback about this new booking process with the new website for booking uh, studio classes. So Effective uh, this past Wednesday, December 13th, 
Peloton transitioned to this pay-as-you-go purchase model to streamline the booking experience for the studios. Um, so you no longer have to have those credits purchased in advance, um, which was kind of a pain because you, you know you buy these credits for whatever $35, $40, and then you don't get into a class, and then you, you have this credit, and then you have to worry about it expiring and getting extended. So now it's like you only have to – if you get into the class for the wait list, you only have to buy it at that point um, at checkout. Um, yeah, you'll still have to pay for it. Um, so, um, in other, uh, in terms of the other update, there's now a change to the wait list feature. So before you were limited to, I believe, was it two classes a day, four total over that. Um, that course of the weekend, which was considered basically Thursday to Monday, which is the time frame for when members can be in studio classes. So now, waitlist classes, if you get on the waitlist for something, that, that counts towards that overall limit, the daily limit and the, the total weekend limit. Um, and also, the thing is now, if you get off the waitlist, you basically have a, this two-hour window to, conf to, to, to confirm by email. Um, which some members have already, you know, missed because they're obviously not checking their email or not getting that notification in time. Um, so now, um, the waitlist option counts towards the limit, and then yeah. So now it's just not you're not on, you're not automatically confirmed into the class. So I will add there that I heard this morning actually from somebody that if you, for those folks that have credits at the moment in their account, because there are a lot of people that obviously still do, um, they are pulling automatically from your credits and you don't have to respond to that two hour, you know, that two hour period. Um, yeah, there's going to be a weird like three week, four week transition with the credits. But once all the credits are depleted because you can't buy new ones going forward, then it's going to be that two hour. So if you get an email at 3 a.m. and you're asleep, you missed out on getting into the class because you're not going to see it by 5 a.m. and so go in and book that, your class. Chris. I don't get so that. So if you get off, so if you if you go in on the new site, because I haven't been on the new site, mm -hmm. I just kind of heard secondhand. If you get on the site, there's a wait list option. Mm -hmm. You select wait list. It doesn't make you buy the, no. the class experience. So basically when you get the notice that you're off the wait list, you have to go in and respond within two hours and buy that. Yeah, there will be the a class. link where you go back to the studio. It'll take you to that class. It says, we have a class for you. Do you want to confirm? You go confirm gotcha. and then you put the payment there. The other thing to note is like – People for the past six weeks have been booking with the old rules. So you have people who might have four confirmed classes and five wait lists. If yes. you in the next three weeks get a class that says you're off the wait list, it's going to make you cancel one of your four other classes to confirm that wait list class. Mm -hmm. So just even if you're under the rules, <laughs> I was just going to ask that question. Is enforcing <laughs> that and making you cancel. So yeah. Look, can I give my perspective here? I, I think there's some, um, you know, I, th I think there's definitely a, 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 a logistical good way that they've done this. I think that it makes it a lot fairer. Um, I think in the past, people having credits were able to kind of, in those were that were fast or knew the system, were able to kind of get whatever classes they needed to. This way, you know, you could kind of got to have your top choice and that's what you'd go for first. And then, you know, once you've gone through that process, then go into, you know, see whether you get a second, third or fourth class. So I think that from that perspective, I, I like it. I think it gives more, it's going to give more people a chance to be in the studio that have not been in, um, you know, up to this point. I guess the part that I don't like is that for folks that are traveling in who just want to maximize time, I mean, they've spent a ton of money to get into New York or to go out to London and, um, you know, would like to maximize their time because maybe it's a one and done, you know, there's a chance they may not do it again. The four class limit, I think is, is, is tough. I think it's hard. Yeah. I think it's I've seen unfair. some people suggest like maybe a workaround would be change the limit to six or eight, but then have the limit be for a month period. And that way people traveling in might be able to do a little That's bit more. That's a great but idea. Then, yeah. You know, so things like that might help with that. But you'll get into other scenarios where you're never going to make everyone happy. So I don't know if I there's know. a one fit solution. I do like I understand the two hour thing. Like they want to keep the list moving and give people a chance. But 
you know, again, if it shows up at 2 a.m. or some people who work all day and can't check Correct. email. So it, that's a tricky I situation. Think should be, I think that, it should be 24 hours. I think it should be 24 hours. I mean, it just, yeah, you know, issue, the, they're different issue, time they're, zones. Yeah, but the issue there is like two days before a waitlist spot opens up yeah. and someone doesn't respond for 24 hours, only yeah, one other yeah. person is going to get the chance to get on that before it goes Makes to the standby. So. I get but maybe up to maybe it, up man. to a week, maybe up to a week before a class, you know, give it 24 hours. And then within that week. So if you know you're on a wait list within a week of a class, you know, then make sure you're checking your email type thing. You know, yeah, do maybe, something, I don't know. maybe set it so that it doesn't send between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. local time um, for people who might want to sleep some. But, you know, yeah. it'll be. Yeah. You know, I've already. I don't know about you guys, but I've already gotten some feedback on the new policies. I heard that on Thursday evening in Cody's ride, yep. there were six empty bikes. In Kirsten's recent tread class, there was only, I think, seven uh, bikes occupied. And then on Dennis's recent ride, there was a bike empty, and I think an employee jumped on that one to fill it. I was going to say, so. it would be curious to see if this gets adjusted over time, if they're having problems keeping the classes full. Full, I, yeah. 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 Because you can, still, thing- you can still go do standby at the studio, um, okay. but I don't know how many people are going to go and be able to do that. So, yeah, we'll see. The other thing I think is important to note is, um, you know, pr- previously you were able to book two spots, two spots for a class. Um, that is now being taken away. So no guest spots. You want to bring a friend? Too bad. They got to book themselves. Um, they are honoring, um, folks that have do two guest spots, um, you know, up to this point. Uh, but, but beyond that, with the new booking system, you cannot book a second spot, which but- I don't totally disagree with. I kind of do like that idea because because I think that people were just kind of booking two spots and not necessarily using both spots or, you know, so yeah. Yeah. And it, with those people with two spots under the old rules, if they get a new class that will count as two of their four. So the new system is going to count those two. Like if you, you won't be able to do another class that day because you'll already have your two spots for the day. So okay, just keep that in mind over the next six weeks as it's transitioning over. Very good point. All right. Uh, okay. Because I have I'm a couple sure classes a lot. booked. Yeah. I have a couple classes booked for London, and um, I do have guest spots. So I'm curious to know. how So I'm my gonna, thought to would be out. that the system will not let you book another class on the day you have that, because that will be your two classes for the day, and that will be two of your four classes for the weekend. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. See, London. I I don't think London. They should apply all this to the London studio because I don't have the the issues. Maybe that they do. I think, yeah. Well, maybe I think they, it may be different. It, I'll be honest with you. I, I think maybe London isn't applying the rules because I know that I do have the guest spots um, and I do have more than four classes for the weekend. Right, but mm. did you book those under the new system or the old no, system? No, old system. Old so system. old system, you could do whatever. Okay. But new okay. system okay. moving forward, yeah. that's got a it, different, got it, got different it. story. Got it. And if you okay. try to add any on top of what you already have, that's when I think the Won't new rules me. will start applying. I believe. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. And this sense. new system, this new system is now powered by the company Team Up. Mm-hmm. That's the the software they're using. And yeah. just just one quick note: if you had credits under the old system, they will should be automatically transitioned over, and they will automatically yeah. deduct those until they're depleted. Then you'll have yes. to use a credit card. And if you haven't tried yet, go ahead and log in. Um, because it does make you re-sign up and add your personal information to sign a waiver again. So you'll want to do that mm. a little bit early before you're trying to book your first actual class. Yeah, you have to kind of – you do have to go into a class and kind of pretend you're booking a class in order to get the waiver. Yep. So that that part I learned. Um, you don't have to book the class, but it but does make you sign the waiver, and then you can just get out of it if you don't want to book the class. Yep. But, yeah, that's a good point, Chris, definitely for folks to go in. It does give you like a link that you have to click on to re-sign up um, yep. to get in. And My it's name. two separate. And, and just to know, if you're if you're booking for those folks that are traveling to the UK from the states and Canada, um, it is two separate. You know, it is two separate logins now, um, which is great uh, for some. From a 
booking perspective, I guess, but not necessarily if you're kind of back and forth between both. Um, our, our, our good friend Greg Dawson must be blowing his mind in trying to figure it all all out with his <laughs> London and his and his U and his um, US uh, bookings. I know he was confused with the whole with the whole thing, but you do have to do that. Yeah, and one um, last before we move on to the next yeah. story. Friendly reminder, under on both studios for the holidays will be closed beginning December 23rd uh, through January 1st. So no live classes during that time frame and obviously no members in the studio for, for classes. So yeah, hopefully we'll see those uh, top 50 countdown classes still drop during that time like they've done over the last couple of years. They haven't teased it yet. but Maddie, um, Maddie did say something in his oh, walk and talk on Wednesday. Okay, he, so he did say that that was coming. He was talking great. about that. So um, I did, yeah, I, I was going to suggest to mention that, that he did say that those were coming. Mm. So definitely look out for those because those are kind of fun to do while the studio's closed um, and catch up on those, you know, on those classes, which are great. Stacking, stacking stuffers. Stacking stuffers. All right. Well, Peloton Apparel, and this is big. This is really big. They've announced a commitment to providing more inclusive sizing and will now publicize size ranges in advance of collection releases. So there were a lot of, you know, unhappy and um, disappointed members um, when certainly when the collab with Lululemon um, was first rolled out because Lululemon's sizing just didn't fit the mold for everybody. And, um, you know, folks were vocal um, and Peloton listened. And I think that that's really, really cool. So the decision, you know, definitely came from a response of the feedback regarding the lack of inclusive sizing. Um, and they shared a message on Instagram um, saying that their commitment to offering more size options for members across their Peloton apparel collections um, and future collaborations, you know, was going to be happening. They aim to deliver an empowering fitness experience for all body types um, with the latest Lululemon winter collection featuring select size styles um, up to size 20. So this was released on December the 14th. So this past Thursday, um, the collection includes new items for both men and women and more extended sizes than previously available. Uh, moving forward, Peloton said that they will inform members of these size, size ranges for collections um, before they're released. It will apply to collaborations with Lululemon and other partners, as well as their standalone Peloton apparel collections, you know, too. Um, they have indicated plans to branch out to more inclusive sizing um, as well in 2027. Um, so I actually 2027. Where am I? 2024. I'm jumping three years ahead. Um, 2024. Um, so yeah, I think that that is huge. I, it was a really heartwarming. I was really pleased to see that. I think members were really happy to see that. Um, and they jumped on it really quickly and pretty, yeah, know, pretty promptly, very promptly. I think within a month, you know, they had this. So, um, huge yeah. kudos and shout out, um, to the Peloton apparel team, um, for, you know, recognizing and, and, moving forward on that. And then sticking with apparel, um, last week we saw the launch of six new instructor-inspired graphic t-shirts from Peloton Apparel. It was the wrap-up to the five-day winter wonderland sale. Um, the t-shirts were inspired by John Husking, Adrian uh, Williams, Dennis Morton, Cody, um, Ben, and Matt. Um, so, John's T-shirt, inspired by his At The Club series in Club Husky, says, let's go Club Husky. And I kind of have to add this in because I would be remiss if I didn't. But um, after Atlanta, um, there was that Club Husky party and there was a great poster that they had up um, that was really cool that said kind of let's go Club Husky. Um, and with heading to London in September for my birthday, I wanted to get a Club Husky T-shirt made for everybody in the 
the class. Uh, I did reach out actually to Peloton and, you know, they kind of said, well, mention it to Peloton Apparel, um, but basically we, we can't get it done, you know, for you. Um, at this time. So I took the logo, I took the the screen grab and um, I made my own. And I had tanks made with this Club Husky, let's go Club Husky on the front of a tank. Um, So of course I was incredibly chuffed when I saw that that (laughs) was what they used for, um, well, that was that, is that a very South African word? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was very happy uh, when I saw that that's what, what, you know, that's what they had used. Um, The logos are on the back of the t-shirts, but um, they're very cool. So, so John's is in fact that Club Husky, let's go Club Husky. Adrian centers around his frequent emotional lap raise that he uses um, in classes and says, you know, emotional lap run club. Dennis says Dennis Morton's surf club. Um, If you can't be good, be careful. Um, Cody's (laughs) is quite funny. It has a fake relationship hotline graphic, uh, while Ben's focuses on Ben's army um, and his leaderboard, which is his, you know, his leaderboard group um, name um, with a graphic of a globe, you know, of the world and with all the countries Peloton um, is in around the world. So um, that's a really cool one. And lastly, Matt's, uh, Matt Wolpers is about triathlons um, saying run, ride and row and has a picture of a tread, a bike and um, a row. So, um, you know, really cool. They come at a a price tag, $48 um, in the US, um, 48 pounds in um in the uk um which i th- i i thought was um a little hefty that's a premium shirt um, a premium shirt and they're unisex so it's only mm. a t-shirt you know they're not a tank it's only a t-shirt um you know a lot of women don't like necessarily wearing a t-shirt prefer a tank um but but it's great. And I think that they, you know, they made a great effort. Um, I'm sure some of the other groups are, um, you know, probably frustrated and disappointed that their, you know, their group didn't get um, a T-shirt. But maybe maybe they'll roll out more. I'm sure, you know, if they're, if they're this um, responsive to members, um, you know, requests, maybe they will in the future. As they've done with the Little Words bracelets, you know, they've continued to expand that. Yeah, I know a couple sold out already, so it seems like there is interest. And for some reason, Matt Wilpers, even though it was listed, it never actually went for sale. It just said ah. coming soon, and it still does. So there should be a stock of those at some point. I didn't point. know that. Yeah. All right. I didn't try buying well, it. They, they appreciate you doing all the work for them, Amanda. Right? Shirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I, I actually felt bad, and I reached out to John, and I said – because I had given him one. I had one made for him when I was in, um, when I was there in September and I gave him one and, you know, he, he, he just, he was very grateful. But I said to him, I said, John, I said, I'm so sorry. I let the cat, you know, the, I let the cat out of the bag early. I had no idea. And I, you know, I apologized, but, um, uh, you know, he's so lovely. He was like, Oh, don't be silly. And, you know, it was, it had been, apparently it had been in the works since April. So they had ah. been talking about these. He told me, you know, since the April previously, of course, I had no idea, but it, it kind of, it kind of was a nice feeling knowing that I was ahead of the game here. So, um, I had to throw that in this week. <laughs> I couldn't so leave chuffed. that out. So chuffed. So chuffed. <laughs> um, all right, moving well, along. Peloton is expanding their popular Extra 10 series into a new modality, Strength. They shared the news via um, the weekly This Week at Peloton from the Peloton Studios Instagram account. Um, six new Extra 10 Strength classes with six different instructors will release straight to the on-demand library on December 11th. Each class is 10 minutes in length, focus on, or focuses on a particular muscle or muscle group. Uh, but we have the complete you know, listing of them on the, the Pella Buddy right up on this. But uh, there's an extra 10 lower legs with Andy, extra 10 chest with Ben, an extra 10 glutes with Rebecca, uh, biceps with Tunde, triceps with Callie, and then quads with Rad. And then all the classes, they are labeled as intermediate, and they're designed to be taken with another workout. So they don't contain a warm up. So you should just you, you should be prepared to already be warmed up and ready to just basically jump straight into the work um, when you hit that start button on the class because there's no 
um, real kind of intro. You're just going to get right into it. Um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll have more coming along the way too. So, um, yeah, they've been dropping we'll those every more. Monday or so, I think. Um, so look for a handful every Monday, I think, because they've been doing all the different disciplines every Monday. There were some for rowing, bike, and run that dropped Monday as well, but it's just a strength that we're new this week. So, Adrian, he has a new strength program on the way, a lower body focus program, um, which is glutes and legs, which um, is just around the corner. It's arriving on December 18th. Um, Peloton shared the news via their workouts to watch email that they sent to members. Um, it says join Adrian for four weeks of glutes and legs strength training, um, hit two to three classes a week and track your gains, uh, find it under the programs on December 18th. And, uh, it's also trackable on Peloton guide. Um, but according to the email, it'll specifically focus on the lower body and is designed to be taken over the course of four weeks. So with a commitment of two or three classes each week. Um, and this is Adrian's second uh, strength training program. He also has an advanced five-day split program from 2022. Um, so yeah, Monday, the 8th, December 18th, so tomorrow, um, Peloton was releasing the new strength training programs exclusively to the Peloton Guide before them making them accessible to members. But now um, these new programs have not been guide exclusive, so it should be available on all devices uh, for everyone to take. Um, it doesn't mention if it'll be compatible with the guide's rep tracking feature or not. It will be. For those who do. Oh, it will be. Yep. Okay. Nice. Um, and the strength program, it'll be housed within the programs tab. So, um, um, meaning the classes, they have to be taken in sequential order. Uh, within the specified time frame. I don't know if, um, Chris, if you're going to be adding links so you can... Yep, by end of day Monday, there will be, your own pace. There'll be links there on Pella Buddy under our programs page. So like all the other programs, you can go and get to them that way if you don't want to follow the full program. Yes, right, Chris, nice. has the cheat, Chris has the cheat codes, <laughs> <laughs> so all to speak. All right, all right, all right. Well, it looks like Pilates and bar classes will now have accessories being used as well. So Peloton shared on socials that Hannah Corbin, Ali, DT, Anna, and Kristen will show members how to incorporate mini bands, sliders, and as Kristen shared on her Instagram, her magic circle, circle. Um, into their <laughs> workouts. So members um, will see this in the Pulse Hour classes Monday to Friday at 9.30 a.m. So yeah, just adding a little bit of spice to the Pilates and bar um, classes, which I think is kind of yeah. cool. And they kind of, you know, used it as a stocking stuffer type thing, you know, go out and buy, you know, buy the band, you know, buy the bands, buy the, the magic circle, etc. Um, yeah, Chris is very... Kristen was posting. She's saying she's very excited to, to use that magic circle in her. I think it was her Friday morning mm -hmm. Pilates class. Exactly. That she was this past debuting it in. Exactly. So she, yeah, she was she was including links throughout the week in her Instagram stories to get your your magic circle. Yeah, if that, you that missed Friday out on class. what those exact ones were, we do on the article on our website kind of have some of the ones they recommended or some of the other ones if you don't want to pay for the Lulu branded. Lululemon branded ones. There are some third party ones as well. So uh, you can go to the article yeah. on our site to kind of see what some of those alternatives are if you want to get some of those um, to follow along with them. She was posting on Amazon link. I think yep. they're around forty. Yep. There's a couple a couple price points depending on where you wanted to to get in. All right. Nice. Nice. Well, Peloton has officially announced the details of their next artist series featuring the iconic American hip hop group run DMC. Um, they share the news via Instagram. It, um, the series began all on Thursday, December 14th. We had seven classes across four modalities, including three in German. It appears that all the classes in the series, um, they did take place live. I think Chris, you can confirm that our fact checker. Um, Correct. but they are as follows. We had a 10 minute, Run DMC core strength with Cliff, a 20 minute run, uh, DMC, 20 minute run DMC. Okay. That was okay. Sorry. 20 minute DMC full body strength with Ben, a 30 minute run with Tobias, uh, which was in German. Uh, the cliff class was obviously in German as well. Uh, 20 minute ride. 
Yeah, 20 minute ride with Mila. That was also in German. A 30 minute run with Jermaine Johnson. A 30 minute ride with Dennis. And then rounding it out, we got a 20 minute run DMC row with Katie Wong. All right, nice. And I think it was just a generic um, artist series badge for that one. It wasn't any special jazzed up one. All right, so um, for all the German um, speaking members, the London Calling German Weekend dates have um, for night for 2024 have been announced. So German members looking to come into PSL um, will have four opportunities. Um, they call them courses, but really workouts and activities that they do. Um, it looks like they are only doing them on Saturdays next year. So that is a change from before. So it's not a kind of a whole weekend. Um, they will be on Saturdays um, with um, the German instructors in attendance. The dates that they have released are um, uh, March the 30th, June 29th, October 5th, and November 30th. So folks that are interested in planning ahead um, that are, you know, would like to come in. And of course, it's not just for German members, but the day is basically, you know, conducted in the German speaking language. So folks, you know, should know that. Yeah, last year, they uh, when they announced them, they kind of put all four weekends on the schedule at once. Like it was in March, they announced and they went ahead and put the December dates. They haven't actually loaded them on the calendar yet. So they said um, more details soon. So I think in the next couple of weeks, maybe they'll go ahead and start loading those and make another announcement. So at this point, they just put the dates out there, but you can't go book them yet. Perfect. Got it. Awesome. When did you say you were heading to London next, Amanda? I am going in January. I will be there um, the 11th to the 16th. And what's the, what's the, just a, just a random visit? No, my daughter is um, going to be studying abroad. And I told her that uh. I had to go and set her up. I mean, she And you were fully supportive of this I mean, study you know, abroad. she, oh, I was fully supportive. I mean, she was looking at Australia or I, although I would have liked Australia. My oldest one went to Australia. She was in Sydney, but um, nope, she's doing London. And she was like, mom, you know, parents don't usually come and set up their kids. I'm like, uh, this parent does. <laughs> Uh, but I am really, since you brought it up, I am really excited though, because I was able to, um, coordinate a, um, Club Husky takeover, um, on the, on the Thursday evening that I'm there and we have booked out all 14 treads, but she will be in the class with me, um, wow. as well as her roommate and her roommate's mother who is traveling with us. So, um, three newbies in the class and I'm really excited, um, for Nicole to get to see, you know, my world, my Peloton world. So that'll be, a, that'll be a ton of fun. Is um, Nicole, will she be attending London School of Economics? Um, she, no, she will not be. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> she will be, she will be partying in London for six months on my dime, I'm sure, um, with lots of travel. Now, the, my University of Miami have an affiliation program with Queen Mary University um, ah, okay. in East London. So I only um, ask because so, yeah. Jackie, when Jackie lived in London for a year, she went to LSE. Did that she? Was, yeah, that's where University yeah. of Michigan had a, you know, feeder program. So this is the first year that Miami have collaborated with a, a, a school in the UK. So, um, ah. yeah, so she will be doing that. Um, and Very cool. I'm sure there will be a couple visits within the six months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, shifting gears a little bit, Peloton has hired a new chief marketing officer, CMO. Uh, Lauren Weinberg will be based um, out of New York City, will serve as uh, part of Peloton's senior leadership team. Um, Peloton shared the news via press release. They said Weinberg brings over 20 years of expertise as an insights-driven marketing leader. She'll serve as a member of Peloton's leadership team, reporting directly to CEO Barry McCarthy. Uh, she'll oversee brand and product marketing, growth marketing, creative consumer insights, membership, and global communications. And um, just some background on Lauren. Uh, she previously worked as the Senior Vice President, Chief Marketing and Revenue Officer for QuickBooks um, at Intuit. And she had then previously served in roles at Square, Yahoo, MTV, and AOL, and frequently appeared on various industry lists, uh, such as Forbes 50 Most Entrepreneurial CMOs uh, list, Adweek's Top 18 CMOs, uh, Brand Innovators, Top Women in Marketing. So she's got a pretty, um, pretty extensive background and um, accolades there. Um, 
she'll be replacing the uh, CMO Leslie Bar uh, Berland, um, who's leaving Peloton to join Verizon Communications. Um, Berland uh, was tenure as CMO was was kind of short, uh, less than a year. Had she had joined back in January of 2023, replacing longtime Peloton CMO uh, Dara Tresseter, who left in 2022. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. How she fills those shoes. Yeah. Hopefully she stays longer than a year. <laughs> she did mention in her <laughs> statement that she uh, is an active member of the Peloton community. So I'll be nice. curious to see what she brings from that. And she did mention also that she's uh, looking forward to continue building on the momentum of the brand's transition. Uh, just kind of implying that the work that started since, I guess, March for kind of migrating towards the app and stuff will continue to see that over the her tenure as CMO. I really like the fact that she's a Peloton member. I think that's cool. And I think that certainly from a marketing perspective, hopefully she'll, you know, she'll bring in that dynamic um, yeah. of not only a corporate, you know, a corporate kind of uh, presence, but also a, you know, a social member presence, which will be, we'll need which will be cool. We'll need to find out the leaderboard name so we can vet the stats and kind of see just how extensive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm curious. What I, have to do I, looked for, I looked for her on social media. It didn't, it didn't seem like she had an Instagram profile that I could find because I was just curious to see, you know, she Who was she out was there. And, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, um, Peloton recently launched the NBA League Pass, allowing members to watch NBA games on their bike, tread, and row devices um, with a separate NBA League Pass membership. We had mentioned that to you guys before. However, not all members will have access to this feature. So some Peloton members have received emails informing them that their older Peloton bike models do not support this NBA League Pass. These members will still have access to Peloton's collection of NBA-themed classes, though. Um, the email sent to members states that older versions of the Peloton bike, including um, the recipients, are income compatible with NBA League Pass. However, members will be able to enjoy instructor-led classes, scenic content, and lane break. Interestingly, some members who received this email already had access to the Peloton Entertainment Beta and Netflix Beta features, indicating that their devices could access some entertainment content. Um, the mm. reason for the exclusion of the NBA League Pass on these devices is unclear. It seems that um, not only members with Generation 1 bikes who were previously notified about the secession of new software features have received this email, but also some with Generation 2 two bikes. So Peloton's entertainment support page does not specify which devices are equipped for NBA League passes. Um, members are directed to contact the support team for assisting in determining what streaming services their you know, touchscreen supports. Uh, the inability of some tablets to access the NBA League Pass, um, but still access Netflix and other servers might be due to the digital rights management um, licensing enforced by the NBA on their streaming platform. Um, although, again, this has not been uh, confirmed. As we know, Peloton first announced their partnership with NBA and WNBA back in October with League Pass um, rolling, uh, officially rolling out later, bringing Peloton Entertainment out of the beta phase and expanding the feature to all members. Yeah, it's so, got to yeah. be on those older tablets. It's got to be with live streaming, I would think. It probably totally kills, bogs down whatever, you know, Ethernet card is in that is in that hardware. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, I have to thank Amanda for giving me to signing this next story. <laughs> uh, so Peloton's library, uh, sorry, <laughs> class library maintenance, or as we like to call it around here, the class purge, um, has continued this past week, marking the thirty second week in a row. Uh, this process has taken place on quite a hot streak. Uh, this week, Peloton removed the majority of classes filmed during four days, uh, from October 3rd to the 6th of 2020. Um, 
result in the removal of about 90 classes um, from the on-demand library. 10 classes were saved from that time period. But um, yeah, it still seems to be dwindling down a little bit. We, we're kind of staying on that downward trend now at least. Right, Chris? Do you concur? Yeah, I think this is four or five weeks in a row. It's been four days. So it seems like the new pattern now is that. So we'll see if that continues indefinitely or how that goes. But we're not seeing the big two to three weeks at a time anymore like we were over the summer. Nice. Good. So yeah, I would think they would, they would, we're, we're well into um, Hudson Yards, PSN, yeah, we're, six, we're six so months into think, that now. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd think that they would be less apt to, you know, because now it's, we've got very consistent content from the new studio. Um, so maybe it's just purely for storage purposes at this point. All right. So you see, it wasn't such a bad story to give you this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kept it quick, nice and nice, nice and short. And, nice and quick. And then um, a very happy birthday to German tread instructor Ma- Marcel Marr, um, who celebrated his birthday this past Tuesday, the 12th of December. Um, we wish you a very happy birthday here from Hello Buddy. And I guess we will go right into instructor in the news. You go ahead yes. and kick it off, John. Uh, well, Pel- uh, well, Peloton recently won an award for one of their commercials. Uh, they won the top prize for the use of music at the 2023 Shots Awards EMEA, which occurred on November 22nd in London. Uh, the Shots Awards, they recognize excellence in advertising, recognizing work products, individuals and companies. And this particular award ceremony covered EMA, EMEA, which stands for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, and the winning ad for use of music was Peloton's Anyone, Anywhere campaign, which debuted in coordination with their brand relaunch earlier this year. Um, the ad was created in collaboration with Stink Studios, produced by Stink Films and directed by uh, Ricardo Jones. I'm trying to recall, do you remember this, this specific ad, Chris or Amanda? Uh, uh, I, I do what, remember what when music? It, I do remember when it came out, but I don't remember the music that was playing behind it. No. Yeah, I'm just trying to jog my memory. Don't remember it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Strava, a leading digital community for active people with over 100 million athletes, announced the Year in Sport 2023 nominations to recognize outstanding athletes and clubs on Strava. The awards cover 12 different categories celebrating various aspects of the Strava community, including professional athletes, local legends, trailblazers, and must-follows. Our very own Susie Chan was nominated for an award for Activity of the Year in this year's Strava's Year in Sport Award. Um, The nomination was for her Badwater 135 race, where she became the first European woman to have have completed the three major races in the series. The winners were announced this past Thursday on December 14th, coinciding with the release of personalized year in sports summaries um, for Strava athletes to celebrate their achievements. And whilst Susie did not walk away with the title, um, she is most certainly a winner in our Peloton community. So huge congrats for being acknowledged, for, you know, being nominated. Um, I mean, what an accomplishment. Absolutely. Um, But yeah, we were um, certainly uh, disappointed that she didn't walk away. But um, as I said, she is no question a winner in our um, in our community. So it was actually a um, interesting athlete that had won it. Um, I I looked it up. Mm. I looked it up. She was a climber now. It was Hillary um, Girardi, and she did the fastest known time of the summit of uh, Mont Blanc in France. So she was a mountain climber who did the fastest climb of that mountain ever. Hillary Girardi. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they were just really impressive nominee, nominees in there um, for, for, you know, no question. Um, so, yeah, uh, but huge congrats to um, to Susie for being nominated and, of course, Hilary Girardi for winning. That's, that's great. Well, Bex was recently on 
the Set the Pace podcast. Uh, it's titled Finding Joy in Every Mile, a chat with Bex Gentry. She talked all about her passion for running, how it, she turned that into a career um, that extends beyond the treadmill, obviously, uh, being a, now a commentator, I think, for uh, the New York uh, City Marathon with ESPN, um, from her humble beginnings as a self-proclaimed running commentator to joining elite broadcast team, like I said, at the New York City Marathon. Um, she talked sharing all the highs, the lows, the hurdles, and uh, the genuine moments that defined her journey. So you can find that on all podcast platforms if you want to listen to the interview. Nice. And Allie Love sat down with podcast host Hoda on her Making Space podcast. Um, she chatted about her mission to empower, the routines that keep her on track, and where she finds her inspiration. So you can head over to that podcast if you wanted to hear more. Yep, and rounding out the, out the podcast appearances, Tune Day was recently on the Alley on the Run podcast, which she's, she's been on before. Um, it highlights, it says, the first time Tune Day was on the Alley and on the Run podcast show uh, several years ago, she insisted she wasn't a runner. Now three years and many miles later, the Peloton instructor, best-selling author, and Access Hollywood guest correspondent admits she has fully embraced the running life. So this one, you know, obviously talks all about um, is all about her conversation about um, the New York City Marathon, how she chose to keep it, uh, you know, quiet, and you know the the impact that that had, especially at the finish line, where um, you know she, I guess had that, it hit that huge wall yeah. and that other member kind of like sort of, you know, lifted her up um, and helped her across to cross that finish line. Um, and then she was also on uh, ABC recently. Um, she shared her tips for getting active and staying motivated. And she kind of highlighted these four simple t tips and went into them into more details, but they are to plan it out, write it down, to make it fun, to put on the clothes and grab a friend, grab a friend, have a, have a partner, uh, you know, like an accountability person. Um, so it was, it was one of those, you know, like five minute segments, but it was great. I mean, she was, you know, she was glowing in that, um, on the video. Awesome. And then to round out instructor in the news, um, for those in Panama city beach, Florida, um, they may have been surprised when, um, Ben Alders did a um, really awesome interview. I did take the time to watch it. Um, he did an interview with Panama City Beach um, News Channel 7 um, and chatted about building a strong you for the future. He spoke about um, the book as well as giving tips for work-life balance and really about finding your group that motivates you. He said that, you know, they say that your your closest five friends, if you kind of take the average of who they are, it'll kind of be to what you'll be like. So if you're, you know, your five classes, closest friends are active athletes and, and enjoy working out, you know, you'll tend to be drawn to do something, you know, like that. And I think it, it you know, it gave me something um, to think about because it's, Think about our communities within Peloton. You know, you kind of, you join, you know, you join Peloton and you're part of these communities and you just want to work out more because you're seeing other people doing it and you, you know, whether it be from a social perspective or an athletic perspective, it just made sense in what he was saying. Um, he really did a great interview and um, they are Peloton members, the, the co-hosts, uh, you know, are Peloton members and spoke about, um, you know, being on the bike, etc. So it was a fun interview. Um, and kudos to, to Ben. Thanks. All right, John. So I guess we will go right into our class picks of the week. Um, why don't you kick it off? All right. So first up, Jen Sherman's 20 minute Hanukkah ride from December 7th. Rachel spins 24 gave us this one and said, beautiful and great feeling of support and community. And then Bradley Rose's 10-Minute Hanukkah Arms and Light Weights, also from December 7th. We got that from Armajar 3. She said, figured this would be a great one based on his Hanukkah class last year, and this one was just as good. Kristen McGee's 30-Minute Evening Yoga Flow from December 8th, also from Armajar 3. She said, just a good relaxing yoga flow. 
Awesome. And then, um, yeah, moving on. And, and you know what, before I move on, I do have to add that. I think that the, I, I didn't realize those were the Hanukkah classes when I said for you to go for them. But um, I do want to say a huge shout out to Peloton because they really came through with those classes. There were five classes. Um, each one was better than the next. Um, yeah, I have to admit, I even did Robin's Run. Um, and it was actually <laughs> really good. Um, it, it was, they all were. There was me to all of them. They definitely spoke to the community. I know that the community were very appreciative that they were um, on the you know platform and acknowledged. So for those of you that weren't familiar or aren't familiar, and even if you're not Jewish, they're just fun classes. They give a lot of history into um, you know each one of the instructors and their connection to the, you know the Jewish religion, and it was really cool. So I just did want to yeah. add that in. I did. It was to nice to see in. there was a lot. I did see a lot of praise for Jens. Huge uh, Hanukkah huge. rides. That and was great. She was so appreciative um, from the community. So, um, and there was a lot of um, response from Peloton. So that was really nice that they thanked members for reaching out and letting them know that they were appreciated. Um, all right, moving on. So um, next up, Cody Rigsby. His 30-minute XOXO Cody Santa's workshop. Um, that was from um, December the 8th. Um, Nelly B. Spinnin recommended this one, and they said, if you love his other XOXO rides, you'll love this one too. Ah, oh, and then Maddie Majakamo's 45 minute holiday walk. Um, in true Maddie form, he, um, dressed up as a creepy elf. I didn't like <laughs> his ears, <laughs> but, um, he did go ahead in full makeup. Um, and it, it truly was an amazing, um, you know, live member class with folks in there. It was recommended by Kim Thousand and Spinny Mom, who, um, was actually in the studio. Um, he says, Maddie goes all in for a theme. This one is worth taking for sure. And then Ali Love's 30 minute holiday ride. Uh, this one was recommended was from the 10th of December, um, 12 noon. This one was recommended by Christina and things, Rachel Sprins 24 and Christina M Romano. They said not just the same old Christmas songs, but still great holiday vibes. All right. And moving on to Hannah Corbin's 30 minute dance music bar class from December 11th. Got that from spin bug. They said great full body workout. Uh, Andy Spears, extra 10 lower leg strength from December 11th as well. Got that from George can ride. They said these extra, these extra 10 strengths are a great addition. And then Kendall's 30 minute nineties ride from December 11th. Got that from Just Dance Lisa and M. Madeline Wilson. They said, great ride, fun dance party. Nice. And then Kelly Gullickson's 20 Minute Soundtrack Strength Club. This one came from Nellie B. Spinnin. It was um, back from the 11th of December at 1 p.m. And they said, great vibes, great programming, and loving the series from Kelly. And then those hip hop tours. We got recommended Alex and Tunde's um, 30 Minute Hip Hop Ride from the 11th. Bridge Girl recommended this one. She said, anytime Alex and Tunde are teaching together, you know it's going to be an amazing vibe. Um, and this one was no exception. And then Adrian and Jess's 30-minute hip-hop run, um, East Coast run, also from the 11th. Um, Spin and Spice and Bridge Girl recommended this one. So Bridge Girl was very busy jumping from the bike to the tread. Good for you. Mm -hmm. um, they said, hilarious duo. They were both amazing in this class. All right. All right. Katie Wong's 60 minute row boot camp full body from December 11th. Midwife Lexi and Spin for Spritzes submitted this. They said Katie did an incredibly, an incredibly job, an incredibly job curating a class made for a member request to celebrate the best of row boot camps from 2023. And then Ben Aldis' 20-minute holiday ride from December 12th. Got that from Speech MD. They said fun ride, and he rode the entire thing in his holiday sweater or jumper, as he called it. And then Aditi's 15-minute uh, pop-punk Pilates from December 12th. 
Yogi Jess 82 submitted this one. They said the addition of accessories into these classes will be interesting to see as we go along. All right. And then rounding out picks of the weeks, we've got Bex Gentry's 30 minute holiday run. That one dropped on the 12th at 5 p.m. Eastern. It came to us from M. Feliciano 92 and Kelly Lacroix. They said her news. LaCroix, LaCroix. Um, <laughs> they said her music was beautiful and more classic. Her personal stories are endearing, and yet she taught a challenging run. Emma Lovewell's 45-minute intervals and arms ride, also from the 13th. Oh, so this one was from the 13th, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. It came from It's So Hot, I'm Bacon. I love that leaderboard name. That's such a cool name. Uh, they said awesome playlist. Six challenging out of the saddle intervals and five arms strengths. Lots of hip hop and the new Dia, Dua Lipa song, Houdini. Mm. And then last up, um, Chris didn't have the heart to tell me that it really shouldn't have been in this week's pick of the weeks because it was Thursday and he just mm. put it in there for me anyway. So thank you, Chris. But uh, my pick of the week was um, John Husking's EDM, his 30-minute EDM run from this past Thursday, the 14th. Um, it was a vibe. It, it just was. I've really gotten into EDM music this electric dance music. I didn't know any of the songs specifically, but um, there was just a vibe to the music. Um, he had members in the studio. It was a milestone run for me. Um, and it just feels good. It feels good to be back running, to feeling healthy as we close out the year. Um, you know, I, I've come a long way this year. It was, you know, incredibly traumatic having had my, um, you know, my, my injury and then surgery. And um, it really felt good. And I you know, ran and, and hit a PB and I just had to share that one as my pick of the week. So, um, yeah, that, um, wraps up the picks of the week and I guess the show for this week. So, the goal, folks, is we plan to be here next week to um, give you a roundup of 2023. Um, since the studio will be open um, next week up until the 23rd, we um, wanted to be able to share whatever's happening in the news next week. So we will be um, here and then off for um, Christmas week. But, um, yeah, as always, I always like to say thank you so much for taking the time to um, listen to us, as John says, on the go or being, um, you know, a little bit more sedentary and sitting in front of the, you know, big screen TV with our screen recorded up there like the Sinkinsons do every Sunday and get to watch or, us. <laughs> or while you do your laundry like Jeffrey McEachern every Sunday. Or while you do your laundry like Jeffrey McEachern, absolutely. Um, and Mariana, um, we always appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and again, hope we give you what you want to hear. So um, thank you so much. All right, I guess we wrap it up. Anything you want to say, John? Your words of um, wisdom at the end of the show? Oh, I was waiting for Chris to, to go next. <laughs> oh, you want to be, you wanna be <laughs> the like finale. To, a, you I'm like to clo close I'm, I'm All right. Well, Chris, we always <laughs> appreciate, we really do appreciate your, uh, you, you jumping on. And we're so happy that you've become a little bit more um, camera happy and, and, and friendly and, and, and wanting to be camera friendly, wanting to be on the camera. So um, we love your insights and your bits that you add. So really appreciate you taking the time um, to, to do this and, with us. And keeping us in line. Yeah, thanks exactly. for letting me hop on and, you know, provide a little commentary here and there. We love it. We do love it. And, of course, um, Chris Giles in the back there, um, making sure that it's all edited appropriately. So the, um, you know, the pregnant pause that um, John had in between stories when he wasn't sure it was his <laughs> <laughs> gets, yeah. gets edited. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe one year we'll give and, you a bloopers. <laughs> and, rich, and Rich for making us sound good as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I forget about Rich. Yeah. So, um, all right. I guess that okay. sums it up and wraps it up. And, um, all right. For me here. Bye, everybody. Yeah. For, for me, me here, here in Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Ah, <laughs> there you go. You wanted to be last, John. You said you wanted to be last. <laughs> for me here in Atlanta, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Yes. And for me in Michigan, thank you for tuning in, watching, listening from all over. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Bye for now. Thank you.
Thank you for watching Pelo Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton. By the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pelo Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pelo Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pelo Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.